In the first part of this webinar series, we covered complexity and performance. We ended that conversation by highlighting the OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, and act, as well as condition yellow. As mentioned, the first step in observe, orient, decide, and act is critical. And to set up our observation, we need to remain in a state of condition yellow, a state of awareness despite no immediate threat. With this, we established that our observations are important and some steps that we can take to ensure we are respecting the challenge. But now what do we do? For us at Altus, that means the living movement screen. In a general sense, this refers to everything the athlete population does. But more specifically, let's take a look at the warm-up. The group warms up before every session. This presents the first real opportunity of the day to target an underpinning component of what we do as coaches and therapists. That is change. Change is a product of observation plus intent. So with this, we can see that it is crucial we are paying attention during the warm-up. I've been to too many performance environments that consist of staff members, both coaches and therapists, sometimes sports scientists, standing on the sidelines, drinking their coffee, engaged in irrelevant conversations, or kicking and throwing a ball around. With this, they're missing out on a fantastic opportunity to collect valuable information on what the athlete group is like on any particular day. Just as our vehicles have an aspect of consistent surveillance and monitoring, we need to take that same approach as coaches and therapists. When a light comes on in our vehicle, it doesn't necessarily mean that something drastic is wrong. It's simply telling us that we need to dig a little bit deeper and pay closer attention. The same thing through the warm up. If we see something that sticks out from the ordinary, it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to intervene right away. But if we can keep that information in our back pocket, pay attention to what's going on, maybe dig a little bit deeper, we can start to uncover the true nature of the occurrence. One thing that we need to be very careful of as we go through this is our bias. We need to understand how we see the world and respect the fact that that is not the only way. We know that even the faintest sketch of a storyline prompts our minds to fill in the details. But we also know that we are not that capable of predicting. So we need to account for our biases. One way that we can do this is ensure that we are part of a performance team that has the freedom and comfortness to contribute their input. Also, as we can see in this quote from Dr. Sophia Nymphius, a large scale understanding of averages and the long-term lens of a single athlete can help in this regard. Each of these things can be checked off the list by consistently paying attention to a consistent warm-up routine. We can understand how the group as a whole typically performs the warm-up, and we can zoom in and look at individual athletes within that group. Further, we need to recognize that behavior is a result of the deeper patterns and systemic structures. A change in the system relies on shifting the conditions that hold the problem in place. We can use the Altus Iceberg model from the Altus Performance Therapy course to explain this further. On the surface level, we have behavior. This is what we see. It answers the question, what is happening? And at this level, we are reactive. Just beneath the surface, we have the pattern. It answers the question, what are the trends? And at this level, we are adaptive. Beneath that, we have the structure. We can begin to understand what has influenced the patterns and be creative. Last but not least, we have the model. Here, we are reflective in nature, and we are trying to determine the underlying technical key performance indicators. The layers of the iceberg lead us into the layers of assessment. If we are to afford ourselves the opportunity to begin answering some of the aforementioned questions, we need a living movement screen that covers a lot of bases. For us, that means multiple ranges, planes, and velocities. I think velocity might arguably be the most critical in this slide. Typically, we will forget that an athlete can perform a movement possibly very well at a fast speed and very slow, or very poor at a slow speed, or vice versa. We see this very often with our population, and therefore, through our warm up, we have similar drills that are done at various velocities, as well as ranges of motions and planes of movement. This video will give a demonstration of one aspect of our living movement screen. These are the sprint drills that occur late in the training uh, warm up, performed by Norwegian skeleton athlete Alex Hansen.
which is important to know as we watch these drills, while they may look very sprint specific, we'll use these with a number of different athletes, most notably triathlon, sprinters, and team sport athletes of various sports. These drills are a great way to round out the warm up. They provide much context into sprinting. And done over time, they can start to really serve as patterns within our minds of how the athlete is moving. Hopefully this video builds upon the last and starts to identify how through assessing movement, we can start to uncover the complexity and blend into performance.